In this video, we'll be building a sophisticated data analysis SQL agent and visualizer. This will consist of three agents working together in tandem. The orchestrator agent that coordinates the entire workflow, the data retrieval agent that works with SQL and the database, and the visualization agent that displays the data analysis visually. We'll be using this team of agents to gain deep insights into data stored in SQL-based databases like Postgres. In this example, we have historical data from the energy sector. We have ticker symbols of various uh, companies within the energy sector, and we have metrics like price, market cap, the ratings, dividend yield, free cash flow, free cash flow yield, as well as specific to the energy sector, things like percentage of gas, percentage of oil, and barrels of equivalent per day. We'll be using our team of AI agents to unlock insights into this data set, but we're gonna give an extra challenge. This data set is not clean. What I mean by that is market cap and other fields, they're actually not labeled with the correct data types. For example, this is uh, labeled as text when it, in fact it should be numeric. And other fields like free cash flow is also in the same uh, text in instead of numeric fields. So our agent will need to recognize that and figure out how to handle that. So let's see this team of AI agents in action. So I'm going to ask for the energy table, can you suggest some queries I can ask that might provide insight into the data? So it's going to start with the orchestrator agent. It's going to use the Claude Sonnet 3.5 model. That's the model I'm using uh, for uh, this AI agent. And then it's going to realize I need to uh, call this tool. So this is a retrieved data tool. And this retrieved data tool is linked to this flow here. So it's going to go into this flow, and then it's going to be talking to this data retrieval agent. So this data retrieval agent is a SQL agent. So this knows how to work with the energy table that uh, we walked through earlier. So it's going to go through the columns, and it's going to figure out what are the first set of questions that I can ask about this data. So the agents have come back and suggested some very interesting queries to explore. Uh, energy production and consumption, financial performance, company-specific analysis, regional analysis, as well as efficiency metrics. And then deeper down into the specific questions, comparing uh, energy consumption across different companies, year-over-year uh, -year changes in energy production, and the like. So there's some detailed questions that very quickly you already get a flavor for what insights we can unlock with this data. All right, so it's found some interesting information inside here. It says, I noticed there is some interesting data about production growth between 2023 and 2024, and we can visualize this trend across companies. So let's try that. So I'm going to say, yes, I'm interested in this production growth between uh, these years. So let's please visualize the trend across the companies. So I'll do that. And so uh, we're going to go through this flow. And again, the orchestration agent is going to think about it. Uh, retrieve the data. So it's going to go through this path again. And then uh, once it uh, gets the data, it's going to involve the visualization agent in this workflow. So we'll uh, let it think and then um, we'll, we'll resume when it's finished. So after about 15 to 20 seconds of thinking time, this AI team has figured out this production growth rate and produced a chart. So it's ordered from top to descending order with a KEC as the top production rate. So that is from 2023 to 2024, it's uh, grown the most in terms of its uh, oil or gas production. So it uh, gives you analysis here, 21%, uh, and it goes from this number of barrel equivalent to this barrel equivalent. So if you look into here, this is the right number. So it's getting the correct numbers from uh, the chart. And then it follows on with additional analysis for the other companies. And then uh, it gives some additional insight. You know, there's a relatively gradual decrease in growth rates from top to bottom with no dramatic drops between the consecutive companies. So some pretty cool insights here. And then it further uh, gives you what to explore next. Now, I wanted to just highlight some cool things here because if you look, there's a error here in generating the chart. Now, what's happened here is that there is an ability to recover from error. So if I go to the execution, so the first time it tried to generate the chart, so I see this flow here, it encountered an error, right? So it, it, uh, there's something wrong with the generation. So what it's done is it's recovered from it and then tried again using a different method. And it's in the second attempt, uh, been able to generate uh, the chart properly. So there's built-in uh, error recovery in this workflow, which is pretty cool. 
All right, so let's do a more detailed walkthrough and see how this works end to end. All right, so we're gonna start with the orchestrator agent. So this orchestrator agent has a system message and it's very simple. You know, you are a helpful uh, data visualization orchestrator agent that works with the data retrieval analyst and the visualization assistant. And your goal then is just to complete the user's request. And there's uh, a couple of guidelines, you know, use the chart tool only when the user asks uh, to do that when generating charts just display the resulting URL so that we can actually, uh, or in markdown format, so we can display that in the chat. And then uh, I'll give some instructions to uh, use this retrieve tool to uh, fetch the data. So very straightforward. And then uh, what I'm doing here, is I'm using uh, Claude Sonnet. So uh, I'm accessing this from uh, Open Router. So this Open Router uh, allows me to access all kinds of models. Uh, so I, I'm just using this for convenience. You can use directly the Claude uh, uh, model uh, APIs directly from Anthropotic. So you can do that, but I'm uh, using Open Router. So Cloud 3.5 uh, Sonnet is a very, very strong model. So I use it uh, a lot uh, when, especially using analysis workflows. Now there's uh, two uh, tools that are connected to the uh, orchestrator agent. So these two tools correspond to this flow and this flow. So when generating a chart, it's going to call into uh, this tool. And then when, um, uh, retrieving data, it's going to call into uh, this path here. So let's just open up this uh, a little bit more. So this is a very, uh, also very straightforward tool. So uh, I tell this flow to call this tool when we need to generate a chart, a chart and then I tell it that, uh, um, you know, to always escape multi-line uh, strings so we don't get into some error conditions. And then when processing the output of the tool, the URL should always uh, be in markdown format. So here's an example. Um, now, what is really interesting is how does this uh, tool interact with the, the tooling flow? Mm -hmm. So how do I get from here to here? All right, so this is uh, something I want to dive into a little bit more. So this is something called an input schema. So this input schema is uh, the communication uh, between uh, this orchestrator agent mm -hmm. and uh, this flow here, right? So what, what you're saying is I'm going to give it a query Right, so this query is a query describing the chart to generate in JSON format. Right, so I'm going to give it a query, and then you're also going to tell it the type of the event. So in this case, I'm going to generate. So I'm going to I'm going to say generate is uh, is going into here. Right, and then let me just give you an example. So I'll go into executions. I'll copy to the editor uh, this data from this past execution, so you can see. So I'm going to go into here, and what you'll see is that. I'll go into the switch here, all right? So when I do uh, generate, it's going to pass into this uh, sub workflow, uh, two things, query and event, right? So this query here uh, is um, what I want to uh, kind of plot uh, and to kind of uh, visualize here, and then the generate. So this event is generate. So what happens here is that when the switch determines that the event is generate, it's gonna go into this fork flow here. And it's going to then go to the visualization agent, which is also, uh, it's a little bit more involved here. We're using um, quickchart.io to uh, render this. So what you uh, are uh, doing is just telling this agent uh, how to process uh, this information. So uh, it's it's uh, the data in JSON format. So we do that. And then the output of it is uh, a, a URL that points to the quickchart.io. So in the quickchart.io, I have uh, then the chart that then gets passed back to the orchestrator agent. Now, if I go to uh, retrieve data here, what's gonna happen is that this switch will have data, uh, will go into the data path, and the data path will go into the data retrieval agent. So in here, uh, the data retrieval agent is simply gonna uh, take this, uh, take the text from the, the query, right? And uh, so, so if it goes into this path here, then it's going to take the text related to uh, what the user wants about the query. And then it's going to uh, uh, simply use the SQL and call and generate the, uh, uh, the SQL information. And it's going to return the value. Now, what's really cool about this flow here is that this is uh, what I call um, uh, agent as a tool, right? So using this pattern, so this pattern of a switch that I pass an event, I can have this extend to uh, many different kinds of agents. So in this case, I have two agents, but I could have three or four. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to add a third agent here that does 
uh, internet uh, research with uh, a perplexity tool. I can just add another in here, and this would be my third agent. So this orchestration of agent flow will now have access to three agent as a uh, as a tool um, flows that extend the the power of this uh, workflow. So, so that's uh, super cool. Now, I wanted to call out uh, a couple other things in this walkthrough. In this, uh, Claude uh, Haku is the, is the model I'm using for the data retrieval agent. So if I go into here, again, I'm using Open Router. And this uh, Claude 3.5 Haku is in the same family as Sonnet. But this is the faster and cheaper uh, version of uh, the model. So Sonnet is the next level. So this is. Um, this is a cheaper version, but I found that for this use case, Haiku works really well. So uh, this Sonnet also works, but Haiku works really well. So I'm using this. And also in the visualization agent, I'm also using Claude Haiku. So I can also use Sonnet here, but uh, Haiku is a little bit cheaper so and, and a little bit faster. So I decided to uh, use this. Um, so uh, this all in all uh, works uh, in, in tandem to produce uh, some pretty great and impressive results. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, the setup and the tools that I'm using. So Superbase is the Postgres database that I'm using. It's very popular uh, also for vector databases, but we're using this uh, for the traditional Postgres SQL. So now uh, I'm using the, uh, the free plan. So I just sign up for the free plan. Once you've logged in and done that, you'll have a, a dashboard. So when you create uh, your new project, you can go here and select your organization. So let's say NA10 Energy. So you set up your database password. So just uh, uh, keep this uh, in mind, because then uh, you'll you'll need to use that in your NA10 setting. So you set this up with your uh, database password. So this is a setting that you'll need. So I've created that already. So I've created this NA10, uh, this this uh, project, and then inside the uh, inside the table editor, I can go and create a new table. And inside here, you can say energy is the table. And then you can import data from here and then upload uh, the, the spreadsheet. So this is comma separated spreadsheet in here. And then so it'll import it. I, I've already done that. So once you imported it, you'll get a table like this. And then now um, to get the credentials uh, that you'll need for this agent, uh, so our SQL agent, you should go to connect. So in this connect, uh, what you'll want to do is take a look at the transaction pooler. So not the direct connection, but transaction pooler because uh, this is uh, IPv4 compatible. So you want this. So you look at you want to look at all the different parameters. So the host, the port, uh, the database user, uh, and and then your uh, database password. So where you want to enter that is you go into the data retrieval agent, and uh, in the um, in the uh, so this is the SQL agent. This is what we're using. In the credentials for Postgres, you want to go into here. All right. So you enter the data here. So uh, host, uh, Postgres is the database, the user. And then this password is uh, what you uh, created when you created the project. So you do that. So uh, that's that's all the setup you need uh, for this project. Just uh, here and then creating the, um, uh, creating the uh, open router key. So the open router key is simply uh, you go to openrouter.ai and then you just enter the key. All right, so you just enter the API key. And that's it. So to wrap up, we've been able to build this team of AI agents consisting of the orchestrator, the visualization, and the data retrieval agent. This simple but powerful team allows us to gain deep insight into new data sources.